expedition to the West Nile Delta. Off the coast of Egypt, researchers from Kiel are studying mud volcanoes on the sea floor. The area of interest will be in the center of future natural gas production facilities. The scientists are analyzing the mechanisms that drive mud volcanism, the extrusion of gases, fluids and sediments, in order to evaluate potential geohazards that might affect production. Supervised by marine geologist Varna Brookman, experts from several different fields are working closely together. Mud volcanoes occur quite commonly on the sea floor, especially along continental margins. They are particularly common in the vicinity of deltas, where large volumes of sediments are deposited. Under the high pressure conditions, several kilometers below the sea floor, mud, gas and water can form a mixture that then rises along fractures until it erupts on the sea floor. Continuous and repeated mud eruptions lead to the formation of volcano-like structures. What's unique about the Nile Delta is that for the first time we've been able to see a mud volcano erupting within the space of just a few years. The whole area was completely inactive back in 2003. It was mainly covered with pelagic sediments until just three years ago we saw a new morphological structure. It looked like a giant molehill of freshly erupted material and there was a lot of gas escaping. We were obviously in the middle of an eruption phase. On board the Greek research vessel RV Aieo, this is the scientists' last expedition to the working area. Their mission is to complete their research and recover long-term instrumentation and observation stations from the two mud volcanoes known as North Annex and Giza. In 2008, several instruments were deployed and moored on the sea floor near the center of the mud volcano in order to record deformation, seismic activity and temperatures and to collect samples of gas and water. To recover the instruments, Scientists and technicians use a cable-controlled underwater robot, a remotely operated vehicle or ROF. The Mats rover ROF relays video images of the submarine installations. Helped by these images, the scientists plan their strategy for recovering the instruments. The ROF also helps to recover instruments that cannot be released from their anchor by acoustic signal. The Mats rover brings them to the surface with the anchor still attached. A diver secures an instrument to the ship's winch cable. The device can now be safely taken on board. These high-tech instruments can cost up to 100,000 euros each, but their real value is in the data that they collect. Processing of the data in the Institute's Kiel laboratories will shed light on the processes. This will enable safe production and handling of the resources that are buried deep beneath the sea floor. Of course, the purpose of the voyage is not only to recover the instruments that have been installed for the past few years, but also to carry out additional measurements, specifically to map the plume of methane gas that spreads out above the center of the mud volcano by comparing methane measurements taken within different water columns. The objective is to determine the shape of the gas plume, its dimensions, how high it rises and how close it gets to the water surface, as well as carrying out some basic geochemical research and microbiological studies on the samples collected. Despite the meticulous preparations, not all of the 26 instruments that had been deployed could be relocated. Unfortunately, we lost three of the instruments. One of the piezo meters could not be found. It had obviously been caught up in a trawl net. This turned out to be a general problem. Another instrument, an ocean bottom seismometer, was not found because it had also clearly been removed by trawling. And finally, a cat meter used for measuring fluid flow rates was lost, probably also for the same reason. Apart from those three instruments, all of the equipment that had been installed on the seafloor was recovered, and so the voyage was considered an overall success. Following the conclusion of the expedition, the scientists will start to evaluate the results back in Kiel. 
they will be processing the instrument data and samples they've recovered for many months before they can draw conclusions on the secrets hidden in the depths. <laughs>